Hi, everybody. I made you a Google Doodle, <laughs> and it's all patterned. I grew up in a family of five girls in northern New Jersey, and textiles and fabrics were always around. Um, I learned to sew when I was nine and stitch. My grandmother was a quilter, embroiderer, and I really got interested into it, in it, and I actually went to school for it, for textiles and clothing, and then I got a master's in it. And for 16 years, I worked as a creative director at a yarn company. And then I had my daughter, who's here, and I decided to go freelance. And I've written 12 books so far. This is my latest, Crafting a Pattern Home. So um, I've got a little bit of stuff that previews. This is our house. It's a 1751 farmhouse. And it's white on the outside, and you can't really tell what's inside it. Here it is in the snow. And we have a sheep farm. We have about 300 sheep. And um, my husband's a farmer. He grew up on a farm. And so we sell our lamb at farmer's markets and um, wholesale a little bit. So I'm always shuffling around frozen meat. Um, <laughs> and so the sheep graze. They keep the land down. It's, it was an old abandoned or apple orchard. So here's in the fall. It's incredibly beautiful. I don't know if anybody's been to Western Mass, but it's really pretty out there. Um, this is my pottery shed. This is actually part of the book project. And here's some sunflowers. I love sunflowers. I, I love all kinds of nature and flowers. I grow a lot of flowers. Um, and they're a big part of my work. Zinnias, my favorites. And uh, just the leaves, you know, the, all the, the motion. You can get ideas for patterns from that. The vines going around. Watering can with that beautiful heart-shaped leaf. You're going to see that a little later. Hydrangeas, beautiful pinks, browns, greens, chartreuses, more zinnias. And for a while there, we grew about an acre of sunflowers, and this is them. We've scaled a little bit back because we've gone more into the sheep, but this is them. And I still do a big garden, half a garden of sunflowers. I just love the shapes, and you guys probably know what the name is about how the, the seeds go around. I have no clue. I just know it's pretty. And here's some sheep, lambs on pasture, more sheep. This is an abandoned apple orchard. So pretty, pretty colors here. That stuff, uh, it's a weed, but it's so pretty. OK. So I also have collected textiles for years and years and years. Um, I started when I was, I found a piece when I was in college, and it was my first piece I bought. I can remember it was back in the 70s, and it was right before Afghanistan was going to be ta taken over. And I was like, I got to get a piece of this. So I still have that piece of fabric. Um, and this is uh, Suzani, which is from Uzbekistan. I love this motif. It's all embroidered, if you can believe it, all hand stitched. So I find the connection between somebody hand stitching that and then me using it as a motif in my designs as like, uh, you know, a cool thing to do. So I do a lot of computer stuff uh, with digital art and use these designs. There's my sunflowers, and you're going to see more of this room a little bit later. Those walls are all hand painted. I hand painted them, and that's a collection of cloisonne which is uh, it's either from Japan or China, and it's enamel on brass. Beautiful colors you can get. So I have quite a bit of that. I love all the, all the designs on it. This is an old antique uh, Italian urn and with dahlias and the background. And you can see the other piece of textile fabric on the bottom and more cloisonne. So I find like I can take uh, a bunch of flowers and some of these beautiful objects I have and some fabrics and I can get a design idea just by placing those things together and then taking a photo of it. And I can either paint a picture off of it or maybe figure out how to take two motifs and match them together or get color ideas. And the walls there are stenciled, I hand stenciled them. 
Okay, here's a bunch of inspiration pictures. I'm gonna go kind of fast because I got a lot of them. Um, for, uh, this is from Portugal Ceramics. This is a Mola from Panama, uh, old carpet. Some transferware with flowers and books that I think is from India. Correct me if I'm wrong if anybody knows. This is also from India. This is incredible. This is every single stitch in there is embroidered to make those motifs. I mean, it's just unbelievable. This is from Uzbekistan, beautiful border treatment. This is an old sleeve from, I can't remember where, because I really don't know. Um, but it's, see the moths have eaten a little bit of it, but I just love the motif and the, the border treatment. And then the piece of felt up the right, that's all kind of moth eaten, it's a pretty, pretty idea. This is a Peruvian piece. This is uh, from India, a block print. I'm crazy over these things. That's another part of that. This is cruel work, all stitched from India. This, I have no idea where it came from, but it's all inlaid. So it's all carved and then inlaid. And these are some saris from India. So isn't that cool how they've got the paisley design at the bottom and then mixed with the plaid and then the medallion piece on the top? You can take all these ideas and then turn them into something of your own. This is a piece of ecot fabric. That's another sari with um, all kinds of fun sequins. Another piece from India with mirrors, all embroidered. Another piece from India. This is from Uzbekistan. That's the back. Lots of times these things are such, so pretty on the back too. More from India. That's from Africa. It's a piece of Kenti cloth. And that's a piece of needlepoint. I don't know where it's from. From India. More from India. Uzbekistan. India. OK. And so we have a lot of creatures at our farm. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. That's Annika the cat. And that is, uh, I don't even know who, what, her, what name she was because we have litters of kittens. And she just happened to be doing that for the photo shoot. It was like, oh my goodness, stripes on pattern on pattern. How fabulous is that? And this, a litter of kittens with a beautiful rug behind it and cruel work. That's Paisley, one of our sheep dogs, border collie to round up the sheep. That's Kate. These are our two uh, Great Pyrenees guard dogs. They are um, Bo and Sadie, and they keep the coyotes away. But they're sweethearts to people. And there's some more sheep. Chickens. That's the name of our farm. And that's moving them. You have to move them. And there's a lot of them. And so we do it along the road. And this is lambing season. That's, you know, like probably 10 minutes old. They get up in about 15 minutes, and they know right where to go to eat. It's amazing. Just born, totally just. But <laughs> well, you can see the, the fluid on her, and she's licking it off. Sometimes I go a little nuts and um, dress up my sheep. <laughs> um, so this is, this is a ram, and I was doing this photo shoot. I had this idea to make uh, a sweater for a, sh for a lamb. And I was getting it all ready, and my husband said, look over there. This little sheep was sitting on top of this 300-pound ram. I was like, oh, so cute. OK, so this is an image that I did that's pretty popular around the internet. And uh, so this was my uh, 11th book, Crafting a Colorful Home. <laughs> and now this is the book I'm here to talk about called Crafting a Pattern Home. So all these pictures of these projects are all things that you guys can make if you so choose. Everything's done by hand. None of the materials are expensive. And as long as you get the idea and get the nerve, you can decorate your home or maybe decorate some fabric or do stuff for a shirt or a tablecloth. OK. Um, we're going to have a little section on color. And these are pieces of felt. I love to play with colors. And uh, just, you can, just by rolling things up, you can figure out what colors work well against each other when you're putting them in together. And the same thing you can do with yarn. And you can do it with paint. 
Okay, has everybody seen a color wheel? I don't know if you, pretty much, you know, you learned it when you were a kid. But um, I use this a lot. I use it intuitively. I call it a rainbow in, a, in the round. So as you can see, it goes all the way around. It has 12 slices. And if you look opposite each other on the color wheel, it, those are complementary colors. If you look next to each other, those are called analogous colors. And it's, I'm going to talk a lot about that, so just try to remember. OK, so here we have samples that I painted. All the way to the left is, are the analogous colors. So they're like orange, yellow, and red-orange. In the center, we've got the complementary colors, so blue and violet. And to the right, we have something that I call tonal colors. So it's like shades of blue. And so you can think about what you like the best and use that in your home in different places, depending on the mood you want to get. Uh, this is another good way to work with color, is have a, just a piece of paper in the background, and then just to get a flower or something, and see how the colors work against each other. So this is what I call uh, analogous, because they're all sort of related. It goes from the chartreuse to the yellow, and then to the, to the orange. And this is getting a little bit away from that because it's got the hot pink background. But you can see the same flowers, how different they're starting to look. This is on blue, on a brighter blue. So this is complementary. Do you see how they're popping? And then that's a little bit more subdued, bluish gray. And here it is in real life. <coughs> Um, this is a complementary color combination in fabulous yellow, purple, green. And here it is on furniture. Okay, this, this is our house. And so I use a lot of pattern in the house. It's, um, it has actually very light gray walls. And then I mix fabrics, colors, um, and whoops, yeah, there we go. Um, pottery, all these things with it. So I used the, the gray, very light gray wall and then brought the patterns in first with the pottery and then with more fabrics. This is the living room. Um, so you probably can't see it, but this is, a ton this is a tonal living room. I actually have chartreuse and gold walls and mixed with green, actually it's analogous, okay? But then by bringing in all the different patterns and the different fabrics, it looks differently. It's, it starts to become complementary because the oranges and the reds are popping off the green and the yellow. And so then you start mixing all these different patterns together and you get what I find very pleasing and cozy and warm by mixing all the colors. There's another view. Oh, did you see? The kittens over there <laughs> by the door. Uh, okay. And there's a turquoise wall in the background. So I chose that color so it wouldn't, it would pop off a little bit from the rest of the room, which is sort of gold, because I wanted to, the space to look different than just putting, say, a gold wall there. I wanted to di differentiate that this was a stairway. Uh, this is an uh, analogous combination. So you can see the chartreuse and then the green, moss green cabinets. But do you see the red? That is, um, whoops, sorry. Um, that's a complementary co combination and that's popping. Okay, this is just some artwork I've done. Um, that's Charlie, the cat. He loves this room. This is the um, library TV room, and I use a lot of uh, fabrics in here. And we'll get more into this later, but all the painting on the walls, it's not wallpaper. Um, good wallpaper is really, really expensive to do a room in. So I couldn't afford it, so I just said, OK, I'll do it myself. So I painted the walls to look like wallpaper. And it, it co took a couple days, but you get it actually is pretty because er, there's all these little different variations in it where wallpaper would be screen printed and just look pretty flat. Okay, we're going to talk about some patterns. Um, so, how, does anybody think about patterns? 
Uh, patterns to me are like so, uh, I, I just love them. Uh, they're so inspirational. They're, they just make me feel happy. The simplest one is a polka dot. You guys all did polka dots when you were kids. And here's a different, different bunches of polka dots. So we've got little pin dots, bigger dots, random spaced, spaced out, and alternating stripes. Next thing. Simple stripe, but you can move on and keep changing the stripes. So you see all the variations you can do? Just hand drawn. And then if you take a stripe and you turn it on its side, you've got a plaid or a check. So this is just a, a natural progression of patterns and how you can make them. And you can see all the different variations you can get. If you take it and twist it on the diagonal, you've got a uh, twisted 45 degrees, you've got a diagonal. And then if you start putting them cutting them into segments and you start flipping them around, you've got chevrons and you've got a trellis design. And so these are all motifs that are used in all kinds of uh, wallpapers and fabrics. I mean, we look around, this room is awesome. You've got all these gorgeous plaid fabrics, which are just, you know, it's a pattern. But there's so many different variations. This next section, this is uh, geometric. So there's squares and rectangles, putting them in between stripes and you make a pattern more geometric circles, hexagons, triangles, diamonds, ovals. So you see how it, there's a lot that you can do with simple motifs to make a pattern. And then these are called organic motifs. And they're more round and uh, organic. Uh, <laughs> tulips, hearts, paisleys, one of my, great, uh, my favorite things, flowers. And here we have organic motifs more in stripe patterns and borders combining them. And this is called a figurative motif. And that would be you know, something if you see Christmas or Halloween wallpaper, they take little, um, little objects and make patterns out of them. OK, here, this is how different patterns are made. Um, we can have a lot of white space in the background. And this is very uh, dots on dots. Then we can have a bigger dot. And so you have a whole different feeling from the dots when you change the sizes and change the backdrop. Now here, we can have them so they're spaced out. And you get, it's a random pattern. But you've got, still got the coverage on the one on the right. And the other one is very open and loose. And it gives a different feeling. It'll give a different feeling to a fabric, to a room. This is pattern repeats. Um, you can see a straight repeat up on the left, top left. And if you move to the right, you can see a brick repeat. Looks like a brick pattern that you see all the time in Boston. To the left on the bottom, that's called a half drop. So the, the circles move down a half. And then we have a random repeat. So that's basic, basically fabric design and wallpaper design. That's what you do. And if you do it on a computer, you just move it with numbers, which is what I do a lot of. OK, uh, this piece of fabric. I actually started out designing it by hand, and then I brought it into Illustrator and made it into the pattern. And it had the slipcover made for that. And here's some more um, pottery. I made a, a bunch of that pottery. That's more, I do that more freeform. There's some antique stuff in there, too. OK, here's a thing on uh, where can we get ideas. This is my favorite thing, books, I know. I, I go on Google, too, but um, I find like, just having the physical thing in front of me is easier for me to work from. Um, I know a lot of people use Pinterest. I have a very slow connection where I live, so I tend to just like go old school. But you can see such great things. I also like to visit a lot of art museums, and I have a lot of art books. And I find the color inspiration from there. And there's another. Just doodling, figuring things out. And then I painted the table below, underneath there. OK, so these are projects for my new book. Um, it's all real free form. Um, I actually used my fingers to paint a lot with, put the stripes on in different colors, and just splodge things with my fingers, and played with the colors. There's the top of the table. And I actually made that just by taking plates and drawing around them and figuring out the spaces on the top of the table. I cut, sometimes I cut things out of paper, you know, just like folding them and to get the shape that way. And then I trace around it with a pencil, and I paint it in by hand. And that took less than a day. 
it's, it's pretty quick. Um, this is an embroidered piece that I actually printed. And um, I printed, uh, I don't know if you saw it on the table outside, but I use these things, it's kids fun foam. And I print with kids fun foam on insulation board. And uh, let's see, this is the, this is that. And it's all embroidered. And if somebody wants to come up here and take these, I can, I'm happy to pass them around. <laughs> you can see the embroidery around it. The embroidery is adding more colors to it. Now, so in this picture, what we did was we didn't want it to be boring, so we put in the pops of the color. And I look at this room that you guys are in, and I'm looking around, and there's a lot of browns and tans, but then they put in pops of color. They put the red and the chartreuse, and that's what's making the room super fun. And so when you're making pictures, you have to do that also. And see how we use the pops of color for the plates. And this, I, the idea for this one is I wanted something that sort of was mid-century modern looking, so I did these stripes and spaced them apart three inches and did different colors. But I have, the colors are like uh, teal, dark teal, uh, lupin blue, and uh, a brown. It, it gives that sort of mid-century modern vibe, which doesn't really go in my house, but you can sort of mix everything together and uh, make it look good. But then we use the pop of the colors of the chairs and the plates to make the picture look interesting. Here, what we've done is these are, um, these are napkins. So I did blue with brown on top, printed them, and they actually just use latex paint. All the directions are in my book and um, just did, had fun with some spacing. So there's one spacing. Here is a different kind of spacing. And here is a different kind of spacing. So I, sort of, I was started with one stripe and then kept filling the holes. So a lot of this is uh, playing around. Not everything is successful, but paint is cheap, you know, and you can just slap it on the wall. If you don't like it, just change it. And the way this picture is working is the complementary combination. See how it's orange and blue? And that's what's making that just pop and look vivid. There's those patterns. These are plates that are cer ceramic plates. And I, I wanted to make, for this book, I wanted to make things that were approachable for, for, pe for people that maybe don't have as much experience as I do. So I started with polka dots, and I figured, Anybody can put a polka dot on a plate. And then I moved from the simple polka dot, started changing up the sizes on the polka dots, putting rims around them, and then the big concentric circle one. And as you can see, it's off-centered, and that makes it a little bit more, A, easy to do, and B, interesting. And then I had, my plan was, I had this tablecloth. So I thought, OK, I'll put the white plates with the blue trim on this tablecloth, and it would look really good. And I think it does. This is simple. These are stripes. And what I did here was I just added a little bit of stitching. To, and if you can see, the color on these is they were white and an off, um, like a light teal and a chartreuse. And by picking a complementary color and drawing lines, I just put stitches up it. And it's a, you know, a nice present, very easy to do if you want to like, relax at night. And um, let's see, there's a close-up of that. I've got this afghan here. So this is crocheted. And I don't know if everybody, anybody knows how to crochet, but you know, maybe your grandma does. Um, and my idea with this one was to make it more modern. So I just chose two colors. And I actually drew it out on my computer, fooled around with the color placement, and how big I wanted these hexagons or hexagons to be. And then I wrote, wrote up the pattern. And they're pieces that are then sewed together. This is not in the book, but this is also hexagons. And it's kind of crazy, but really super fun. And people love this afghan. It's a great way to get rid of things, old bits of yarn and everything. Now, this next slide. This has been a dream of mine, to have a paisley chair to sit in to knit at night. Um, I know, um, <laughs> I dream about these things. So the fabric is all hand printed with this stamp. 
nine yards. But the cool thing about this is, I'm gonna pass these around. These are the remnants from it. If you look at them, you can see, you can see how it's not exactly even, but that's what makes it more interesting. And um, so this is one colorway. It actually has three different colorways on it. That's the bottom. And here, David, you want to pass that? Sure thing. And just so you see a difference, uh, this winter I translated a lot of the designs from the book that I had hand printed into digital files. And I had them digital printed. So do you see the difference? The top, see this top one here? So if it's printed, it looks sort of flat and uninteresting because it is digital printed. That, you can see different bits of texture, and to me, it looks more interesting. Um, this is the wallpaper that I hand painted, and I just used FedEx boxes, and I cut out the motifs, and I just dropped a plumb line, put the cross, started with the cross, put that on the wall, painted it red, and then kept laying the motifs on and adding more colors in. And then I got tired of that, and I said, OK, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. So I had a small space between the windows. So I took the square idea, turned it on its side, made it a diagonal, and made almost like an argyle tile uh, design, and then painted some um, vases with flowers on top of it. And you can see the fabrics that I've used on the top. Those are things that you saw earlier. They're the from Uzbekistan, the embroidered pieces. Um, uh, in the past, I've been known for knitting, so I had to put a knitting thing in. And um, that is, let's see, right here. OK. Pillow that's not sewed, it travels better. <laughs> uh, so it's just uh, you follow a chart. And is anybody a knitter here? Ah, there we go. OK, good. So you guys know this. And um, follow the chart. And then these little bits are added on later in embroidery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here you can see the chair with the different colors. So the khaki and the red. And on the side, I used a yellow, just for fun. And people, most people aren't even going to see this. But for me, it's fun. OK, upstairs in the bathroom, I had yellow walls that were um, like color washed. And then I made these, so for this design, I made long eight inch stripes because my ruler was eight inches. I, lots of times I just do things that are really easy. And then I cut this um, OG pattern out and traced, a, traced around it with a pencil and then just filled it in with streaky paint. And this, this picture is really popular. It's been on the internet a bunch. And um, the bathtub, I got, was inspired by embroidery, so I just took some white paint and just did sort of like a flower design on it. It took like less than an hour. And then I put the border on the bottom on the, the wood stand. And you can see that uh, little sun design, which I actually got off of this tile that was on the walls. Uh, I wanted to do some things that were really easy. This is called combing. You take a piece of cardboard, you cut, cut it so it looks like a comb. You paint one color on a piece of wood. So I painted it blue. Then I painted it white. And while it was still wet, I took the piece of cardboard that looked like a comb and just dragged it through in this kind of swirly design. So um, except for the waiting for it to dry, this project was probably like 40 minutes or something like that after I got the paint on it. OK, <laughs> so I like sunflowers. So this is the sunflower bedroom. Um, I did it in the winter when it was really, really gray. And I, um, I thought, oh, let's do some overblown sunflowers. So I cut, I just took a big piece of 18 by 24 paper, folded in four, and then just cut some shapes out. And I used them as a template. And I drew with pencil around and left space for the leaves. So I painted them all in like a, a light yellow. Then I went back and added some leaves, freeform leaves, where, they, where it needed to be. So there was a lot of, of space available around the flowers. 
and then put sort of a wash for the center and outlined it all in a dark brown. And I think it just makes me happy. And in one end of the room, to calm it all down, I put this pretty spring green, because the maple leaves, you know that one day when they come out and it's just like gorgeous? So that's what this color is. So in the winter, I can look at that and say, oh yeah, one day spring will be here. But it, it just gives it a nice, like a break. And then I put these antique engravings on the wall and all the books. Um, there's another corner of the room. That's an oil painting I did and also a uh, lampshade I painted. I do a lot of lampshade paintings. Um, on the other wall, there's closets. And I thought, OK, I need to have something that's more um, geometric to stand off these sunflowers. So I came up with this idea of big diamonds. And I put tape in, uh, in a diamond form. And I just sponged it with a, a piece of sponge to get that the, kind of the mottled edge. And um, it's, not, it's, another, it's another part of the room that's like geometric versus organic. And as you move around the room, it has different feelings. And it all sort of mixes together. Uh, this is a bedspread that I did. Um, it's, it's quilting, because this book is for all kinds of crafters. So um, this, this is pieced. And I used um, an idea. The Amish people are incredible quilters. And way back when, they used to do a lot of stuff with these beautiful, bright colors of wool. And uh, this, this was inspired off of that. Very simple shapes. Uh, the back of it is this is a lino cut that I carved into um, Speedy Carb, it's called. So I used a carving knife, and I printed it in black. And then I scanned it, and I brought it into Illustrator. And then I made the fabric for the backing and mixed up all the different colors. So you don't really see it, but it's where you can add little bits of surprises and take these hand painting uh, ideas and put them into use in computer you know, in the computer world. There's a company called Spoonflower that's out of North Carolina. I don't know if you know about it, but they they, that's where I get the stuff printed. And then another uh, thing so for a little bit of visual rest is these giant polka dots um, that were hand printed on a piece of linen. And I, I call this, um, I, can't, I was thinking about big and little dots. So I did these giant dots and then put French knots, which is an embroidery technique, around it in the different color. And I backed it in this fun color. So I was just, you know, you can do this stuff at night when, um, you know, I don't know, trying to cool down. Um, this is the dining room. This is all uh, painted uh, walls. And then uh, down below, it's a plaid design. More of the dining room with my oil paintings. And mixing the fabrics in. These are tiles that I actually um, painted and glazed and fired and put on a piece of cement board and mounted them into the wall, in, uh, onto the fireplace. And these are some projects outside. You know, she sheds are a term. I don't know if anybody's heard about it, but it's a term. So these are she sheds, and these have vines and a fun painted rug and printed uh, fabric. And here's, this is my pottery shed. So I use vinyl um, VCT tiles on the floors in bright colors. And I did, uh, there's the floor and the cat, Charlie. Um, and I just did this around the edges, with, uh, stamped with sponges. And I used different colors all the way around the room for more fun, because it doesn't really have to match. And that's a hand printed uh, lino cut. And there's some of my pottery more greenware patterns. And uh, this is a source book I got. I, I think, I don't know where it's from. It, I can't understand it. It's got some kind of weird writing. But I love that this was probably given as a guide for people to do embroidery way back when, somewhere. This is a, a lamp from Home Depot. I spray painted it and then put squiggles on it. And that's the outside. Uh, I did a little bit of mural. 
and oh, more. Okay, there's that leaf I showed you in the very beginning, the morning glory leaf with others, and a picnic down in the orchard with different projects. And this is the last bit. Okay, this is a um, cocktail hour on the porch, I mean, on the, under the pergola. And I did this big, big, oversized, kind of Matisse inspired um, circular tabletop. And I freehanded those, um, the leaf design. And then I mixed it with some more gridded designs. And then these napkins that are just all hand painted and they're around, scattered around the room. They're hand painted stripes. So does anybody have any questions? So what I like about this photo is mm -hmm. that the table is really sort of free form, but then mm -hmm. the photos in the, the, I guess, prints in the background mm -hmm. are very um, like orderly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the, the balance or like contrast there is really nice. How do you think about like, like balancing that and like having, I don't know, like some things that are sort of more structured and like formulaic with um, some things that are a little bit more free form. So like I usually will start with something, um, I'll, usually we'll start with a fabric and then have some kind of busy fabric. Say if I'm doing a room and that'll be the color idea. And then I pick a backdrop and then just keep adding things in. Um, this table uh, and the rug, yeah, the table is organic, right? The pictures on the wall are very square, but when you get up close, they're not. They're also, you know, little pictures. And then the rug is, is a base. And a lot of this is done in photography. So um, you, when, you're, when you're photographing projects like I do, you have to make the picture look good. So you're looking through the viewfinder and balancing it all out, making a mix. And sometimes you might move a set all the way across the room to a different color. So um, that rug is usually not under that table, but it made the picture work good. And it's just trial and error and experience. I can't, I can't tell you like the magic formula. I've been doing this for so long. But um, anyway, it, I don't know if it helped you. <laughs> so uh, first question is, um, when you painted the like um, um, the wall with the red crosses and yes. stuff, yeah, um, did you use the stencils for that or no? I used FedEx boxes, huh. and I because I had them. <laughs> <laughs> They're good stiff cardboard, so I cut the shapes out of them and traced around it with a um, just with a leaded pencil, and then filled it in with a paintbrush. I see. I don't like stenciling. You have to be really neat, and I'm mm -hmm. not very neat. Mm -hmm. uh, you get mm -hmm. like if you put the plastic stencil on, it's uh, it, sometimes it seeps underneath. You have to clean it off. It's just this is faster for me. Okay, all right. Well, it looked perfect. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if I stenciled it, it wouldn't have been perfect. It would have been a hassle. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And um, second question is, you said you print your fabrics. So what is the technique? How do you print them? I know you print them digitally, but yes. when you do it at home and oh, on your so own, start, how do you do I that? I have an iPad Pro, and I use a program called Procreate, which is $9.99. And I have an Apple Pencil, and I just start, start drawing. Mm -hmm. And I use the different brushes. I get a design, like a motif that I'm interested in. And then I bring it into Illustrator, do live trace and start building files in Illustrator, you know, with moving to get whether I want a straight repeat, a half drop, a brick, just start fooling around with it. So it's mm -hmm. sort of a combination. Sometimes I'll actually draw something or uh, these things that I showed you, I actually printed them, scanned them, and then brought them into Illustrator. Okay, so, so. do you do it hand printing by yourself or it's no, all through that, Illustrator? That, that digital printing, mm -hmm. I send it to Spoonflower, right. send them a file, and it comes in two weeks, and that you can get a yard. Mm -hmm. You can actually get a half a yard. It's amazing what you can do now. Yeah, <laughs> that's great, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm really interested in that now. It's, it's cool that you can reach more people, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So I'm hoping that people will, you know, really want to try some of this stuff mm -hmm. by hand because it's really, really easy and doesn't take much time, but it's A, finding the time, B, getting the supplies, which I've tried to make things that are you have around your house mm -hmm. and then um, just doing it, getting the nerve to do it. That I find is most people's problem. They don't have the nerve. Yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, that's why I help people. I teach classes and help them get over their fear of sticking a stamp onto fabric. Yeah, and it's great to actually see, don't be afraid of color, you no, know, and no. patterns together. So right. that was yeah, really yeah. nice to see. Yeah. yeah. Because we tend to go in a same direction. Yeah, like at and if you look at the interior yeah. decorating magazines, you open them up, oh my God, they're all white and gray and beige. And I barely ever see anything that I'm interested in because yeah. it's just all safe. Yeah, And I think exactly. people are really afraid of, of color and putting mm -hmm. it together. But it doesn't take a lot to do it. You know, it's just getting the nerve up. And maybe start on a small space like a bathroom. Mm -hmm. If you do a big patterned wallpaper or mural in a bathroom, so it's real big scale, it can look fabulous. And you know, try it that way and get used to it. I also hear about a lot of um, partners. You know, husband likes this, the wife doesn't, and, and that's a stumbling block. My husband loves everything; he's fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky. <laughs> Um, so I'm curious about the relationship between, uh, you showed many rooms yes. where everything's uh, in kind of a, a fun harmony. And um, so the, the first thought I was going to ask was, oh, you know, did you start with nothing and then build all this room at once? And it's like, well, no. Okay. So <laughs> if you've got a room that already has a direction it's going, I can sort of imagine how you might say, okay, this is a, this is a piece that would go well there. But suppose you are moving into a place that's all white and gray. Yes, which how is do you, all builders' houses. Yeah. Now. How do you get started on, you know, wh where do you, where would you start? How would you start building like the intuitions and the, this is the way this is going to fit together? Well, I suggest you get some of those decorated magazines that I just said are all white and beige and start ripping pages out that you like and and or go on Pinterest if you want and just start building a file and you you're gonna see a pattern coming through to what you like mm -hmm. and then pick the favorite thing start with one room maybe a bedroom because nobody will see it um, and and start decorating and seeing what happens seeing how you do and then so that would be one room also, it's away from people. Um, and then maybe do the bathroom next door and start working it so that each room goes along and starts being filled up with more and more color. And you will, you will find your own theme, you'll find your own thing for sure because people do. <laughs> they, they have things that they like and then they can put them in their houses, colors that they like and put them in their houses. You can do it. <laughs> you can, I promise you. It's just a taking getting the nerve. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me. I hope you um, can think more about using color in your home, in your wardrobe, or whatever you do. And also, start looking around. I took a little walkthrough, and I can't believe that this space, they've got such fantastic colors and all kinds of design ideas. And so maybe you'll walk to the Marriott and see some cool kind of carpet. And... Um, you know, just start bringing more pattern into your life, because it's happy. Thank you. Thank you.